Hello, my name is Keith Effort with NIDEC. Today, I'm gonna to provide a brief demonstration on the NIDEC MP3 micro perimeter. So now I'm gonna show you the MP3 touchscreen control panel. As you can see, we have these four icons. We have micro perimetry. Now within the micro perimetry tab, uh, once I select either a pattern that I would like to start the exam, or if I go to my default pattern, in microperimetry, you're going to get the fixation analysis. You're going to get the patient's visual field or microperimetry exam and sensitivity level. Uh, and it will also take a color fundus photo at the end. Now, if you just want to utilize the MP3 as just a retinographer, you can just click on this um, icon here for just only color retinography. Or if you want to track patient's fixation to see if the patient's fixation is stable relatively unstable or unstable. And then we also have our biofeedback rehabilitation um, program. Down here on the bottom left-hand corner, this is the shutdown. So this is gonna shut down the operating system of the micro perimeter. Patients tab where you can select patients or enter a new patient. Exams tab where you can look at the patient's exams. And then the settings tab. The settings tab is where you're going to change the settings for each one of these. So now I want to show you the main body controls. We have a joystick. You can turn it right and left. That's gonna move the MP3 main body unit up and down. We also have the joystick that you make micro movements in and out, side to side. And we also have this motorized ring. And this ring is more for your macro movements. And again, this is your macro movements, uh, left and right, in and out, and your micro movements, in and out. Also, this is the infrared control lamp. Um, you can adjust the infrared so you can see the fundus image uh, in real time with more illumination or less illumination. This is the chin rest that is up and down. And then we also have a manual focus knob and a manual jump from the uh, anterior segment of the eye to the retina. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how to create a customized pattern by going into Options, MP Pattern Editor. Now, these are all the factory patterns that have been sent with the micro perimeter. Now, these cannot be permanently um, altered. However, you could use one of these as a uh, template and remove or add uh, more stimuli. Now, if you want to create your own pattern, we're going to go ahead and click on new. And I'm going to create just a quick demonstration pattern. And I want my attenuation to be up around 28 because this is really going to be for uh, training purposes. I'm going to put a mark at four degrees, four degrees, four degrees, and another four degrees here. Now we're going to save that as demo. And now we have a customized pattern that I created myself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to transfer over the demo pattern that I customized in our Navis EX software. Now to do that, we're going to go into our settings tab on the bottom right hand corner. We're going to go into exams and then I'm going to select on static micro perimetry. Now on the drop down box, we have static micro perimetry settings retinography settings, fixation settings, and feedback settings. This is where you're gonna change your default settings for each one of the exams that you're gonna transfer over from Navis EX into the main body of the micro perimeter. So we're gonna stay in micro perimetry. I'm gonna go down here and click on new, bottom right hand corner. And we're gonna go up here to the pattern name. I'm gonna change the pattern name from this factory name. And I'm gonna select the demo pattern that I created. You could see the four uh, stimuli that I created over on Avis EX. And I'm going to select select. Um, I'm also going to change the dB of attenuation starting point, maybe about 28, because again, this is just really for demonstration purposes. Uh, you would set the dB attenuation starting point um, just depending on what your patient's visual acuity is uh, per exam. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on the save tab. And I'm going to save it the same name, Demo, D-E-M-O, okay. 
now that it has been saved, if I go back home and I go into my favorite settings, you will now see that the demo pattern is here. And I can select that and I can start my exam directly from my favorites menu. Now that I've created a customized pattern named demo, I'm gonna show you how to enter a new patient and take an examination. We're gonna select patients on the bottom left. We're gonna to go to new. We're gonna type in their ID, click okay. First name. And last name. And we're gonna click on the save tab. That patient is already gonna be highlighted in blue. Now we're going to click on select. The patient's name is up on the top. So now I'm going to select that demo pattern that I created from my favorites under microperimetry, which is right here. You can see the four stimuli that I created. Now I'm going to select start exam. At this point, I'm going to place the patient's chin in the chin rest, forehead against the forehead rest. I'm going to have them open their eyes and we're going to go ahead to the right eye. I'm going to select right. Okay. At this point, you want the purple line to bisect the patient's pupil. As you can see, it's a little below the pupil. So now I'm going to bring the patient's chin down just a hair. So now we're bisecting the pupil. Now I'm going to select OK. I have the patient open as wide as they can. Open as wide as you can. Because we want to see those six white focusing dots. Now we're going to focus onto the retina using infrared light. At this point, I can move that fixation target. If you see I move the fixation, the patient moves their eye. Otherwise, if they can't see it, we can change the size and shape under configure. If I click configure, I can change the shape to a circle, four crosses or four line. You can change the color, the thickness, the brightness, and the size. As you can see, if I select five degrees, that fixation target gets larger for the patient. Once you're finished, you click done. Now at this point, I'm going to select OK. And at that time, we're going to look for a tracking reference. Now, the MP3 utilizes the whole 45 infrared fundus image as the tracking reference. Once the coordinates have been completed, this is the pattern that I created called demo that is now placed onto the patient's fundus. As you can see, the square is bisecting the patient's pupil or their fovea. You can move this eccentrically if you'd like, or you just leave it to where it was defaulted. Now we're going to start the exam and have the patient have their finger on or their thumb on the trigger. And we're going to tell the patient that they're going to see different levels of light, dark and bright. If you saw it, you probably did press the button. We're going to start in three, two, one, click OK. Now, as the exam has taken progress, you can see here that this arrow is pointing up. That means the patient saw the intensity of stimuli and it's going up four decibels attenuation on the attenuation scale. If they didn't see it, the arrow will be pointing down. If it turns into a circle, that is their um, sensitivity threshold level. The exam is now completed, so I will not add any more stimuli, but you can add additional ones if you'd like, so we can say no. Now we're going to take a color from this image, open wide. Now the patient did have a nice color from this image here, so we don't have to retake it. Now we're going to look at the checkerboard pattern, because the checkerboard pattern is going to show us the blood vessels on the color from this photo and the vessels on the infrared photo. We want to make sure that they are in alignment because now we're going to be overlaying the microperimetry results onto the color fundus image as they were taking on the infrared. We're going to go ahead and click on the accept tab. And these are my final results. And we can click accept one more time. So with the Nidic MP3 microperimeter, we can follow up on a base like exam accurately because we have a 30 hertz eye tracker. Now how we're going to do that is we're going to select the patient that we want to follow up on our previous baseline exam. We'll select the patient. Then I'm going to go into their exams. Select exams. Select the exam I want to follow up on. And you click on the follow up tab 
down here on the bottom right. Now, just like before, the MP3 is gonna automatically align and jump to the back of the eye and focus. But now it knows which eye we're doing because I don't have to select it because we've selected it in as the baseline exam. Again, we wanna make sure we bisect the pupil with the purple line. I'm gonna go ahead and select OK. Have the patient open as wide as they can. Again, we do wanna see the six white focusing dots. It's gonna automatically align. It's gonna jump back to the retina and focus. And again, at this point, we could change our fixation, but we're not going to or change the shape and size. If we wanted to, we can go into configure, select OK. Now we're finding that tracking reference again, which is the whole 45 degree infrared fundus image. At this point, we have the checkerboard pattern again, but the purple is the baseline and the infrared is the current patient's color or infrared fundus image. So we want to make sure that the blood vessels are all in alignment on the purple and the infrared. And then before we click accept, we're going to tell the patient again, we're going to start the exam, different levels of light intensities. You're going to see, press the button when you see it. We're going to start in three, two, one, accept. Now, because we're starting at the patient's baseline threshold sensitivity, the exam time will be cut very short compared to starting a baseline exam. Unless, of course, there is more severe disease. And now we're finished. We're not going to add any more stimuli. We're going to select no. We're going to take another color fundus image. So open Y. Don't blink. Patient can sit back because we have a nice fundus image. We do not need to retake. Again, we're going to look at that checkerboard pattern to make sure that the blood vessels on the color photo and the infrared are on alignment. And we're going to go ahead and click accept and then accept one more time to send the results to Navis EX software. The NIDAC MP3 microperimeter does have the rehabilitation feedback exam. At this point, we can train a patient to use a different part of their retina that may be higher in sensitivity to give them better vision. So how are we going to do that is we're going to select our patient. Then we're going to select the exam that we want to uh, utilize for the, the feedback so we can establish what parameters and what location we would like to use for the feedback examination. So as I'm viewing this here, we're going to look at the patient sensitivity and this patient has relatively good sensitivity or very good sensitivity and, and stable fixation. However, if I want to do a feedback exam, I'm going to click on the plus sign. We're going to go into feedback and I'm going to just assess the patient's sensitivity. And I'm going to select the area, as it says here, select the desired TRL center. This is the patient's PRL, which is the preferred retinal locus. If the sensitivity is really low in this area, we can train them to use a different area of the retina, say, such as here, which may be higher sensitivity that could help them gain some vision. Um, once you're finished there, you select done. And then you select the exam. I do like the flickering because it uses the checkerboard uh, flickering to help stimulate the patient's brain. We're gonna go ahead and start the exam. So since we selected the right eye, the microperimeter knows what eye we're going to be taking the examination on. We're going to go ahead and select OK. Patient opens wide, six white focusing dots, nice and round. Jumps to the back of the eye. It's going to focus. We can edit the fixation target, but we'll go ahead and select OK at this point. We're not going to edit. We're going to find that tracking reference the whole 45 infrared image of the patient's fundus. And we're going to make sure that the, the retinal vessels are in alignment again with the color photo and the infrared 
which they are. So we're going to go ahead and click accept. Now this is the location that I selected on the patient's microperimetry exam as their TRL, the trained retinal locus. We can edit that if we want at this point, but we're going to go ahead and leave it at where it's at. We're going to select OK. This is the checkerboard pattern that the patient's going to see when they hit that TRL target. If you want, you can go into the settings tab here and we could change the checkerboard radius or the number of sides to so two degree, four degree, or even eight degree. So you may want to start them out larger if they have very poor fixation or the square of the sides, half a degree or one degree and the frequency of flicker. So we're going to leave it at our settings that we have right now. Now I'm going to start the exam. So I'm going to have the patient go ahead and look down just a little bit for me, up too much. Now look a little to your right, to your left, sorry, a little to your left. Stay right there, stay right there. As you can see, once they hit the target, you get that clear single tone. Look away. And you can see the, hear the little beeps, beeps. The closer they get to that target, the closer the beeps will get as well. So we're just going to go ahead and realign. Okay, go ahead and look back at the fixation target. See how the beeps are beep, beep, beep? As they get closer, so find that fixation target again slowly. Go ahead and find it again. Stay right there, stay right there, stay right there. That solid tone. That's where we want them to be. Okay, you can look back at the fixation target and we're gonna go ahead and stop the test. Now, depending on how you want to uh, train your patients, um, would depend on how many times they come back for the exact same test. And this can also be performed as a follow-up. So you're using the exact same parameters as your baseline. From here, we're gonna go ahead and accept our results. And now the data has been sent off to Nava CX, the software. Now that our microperimetry results are stored in Navy CX, we're going to go ahead and look at the results by double clicking on the microperimeter. As you can see up here, we have our parameters and what our results are from the examination. We also have some icons at the top. I'm going to briefly go over what they are. If I select on this icon, it's going to change from the infrared to the color image. This icon here, is going to take the fixation target off of the color fundus image. This is going to be our grid. This is what we call our heat map of fixation. As you can see here, we have a heat map of fixation or we have the fixation dots. This is where the patient looked and looked back to get the fixation target. We also have our fixation analysis and stability, a two degree and four degree circle. It's going to give us the percentage of the patient's fixation within a two to three, three, a two to four degree circle. And it's going to tell us whether or not it's stable, unstable, or relatively unstable as we see here. This is the bivariate contour elliptical analysis. This is to take off the fixation points. I'm going to remove the BCVA or we can put the stimuli back on. As you can see, we have 28 uh, decibel of attenuation. It's small with the stimuli point, just with the number, the stimuli point and the number, or just the point. We can also look at the simulation map of what the shape and size of the scotoma would be. We also can look at the polygon or the average sensitivity within that polygon by drawing out a polygon. Now this is the mean sensitivity and the polygon is 